Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to review the AGLRC F4 V6 Pro All-in-One Flight Controller from AGLRC. In this video I'm going to go through its features, show you how to set it up and then head outdoors in order to see how it performs. The V6 Pro is the third flight controller from AGLRC that features a built-in VTX. The first one was released about a year and a half ago. This is the F3 V4 Pro board. It has an F3 processor. In addition, it uses an IPX connector and it doesn't feature Betaflight OSD. So in order to program it, you had to use an FTDI adapter. It seems like a long time ago, but back then, a year and a half ago, that was the way to program OSD. So it's not as convenient as it is right now. Then came the F4 V5 Pro flight controller, which unfortunately I don't have any longer, which featured a Betaflight OSD and also an F4 board and also the IPX connector was changed into an MMCX one. So after this introduction, let's see what's new on the F4 V6 Pro flight controller. Inside the box, we get in the flight controller. We get in a capacitor. This one wasn't included in the previous versions. This capacitor is a 1000 microfarad, 35 volt capacitor. In addition, we get in the antenna connector. You can choose when you buy this board whether to get an RP SMA or an SMA connector. I've got the SMA connector. We get in this small buzzer, the same one that was included in the previous versions. And we get in some standoffs, harnesses, and this connector diagram. So this is the flight controller. It weighs 15.16 grams. The distance between the mountain holes is about 30 millimeters and the outer dimensions are 44.6 by 40.3 millimeters. The stake height from the bottom to the top of the MM6 connector is about 10 millimeters. Now let's have a look on the flight controller itself. First of all, one of the things that were improved from the V5 Pro version is that now the plus and ground pads for the ESCs are now separated so they are not close to each other which will reduce the risk of shorting the board. In addition, the added holes in the center and also you have the option to mount it from the bottom. Same goes for the battery pads. The supported LiPo batteries, just like the last version, is between 2 to 6S LiPo batteries. And now also the added Betaflight OSD. So instead of configuring the VTX through the button over here, you can use Betaflight, which is much more convenient. And they also added a couple of more options. So you can change it between 0, 25, 100, 200, 400, and 600 millivolts. One of the things that wasn't changed between the versions is that the boot button is still in this format, which I don't really like because in my experience, it tends to fall off pretty quickly. On a normal situation, you won't have to use it because you can set your board to DFU through the CLI, but still I think that using this kind of button is better than using this nylon button. On the front, we can find the MMCX connector for the antenna. I prefer this connector over an IPX connector because I think it's much more secured. The pads for the camera are conveniently located on the front. So on the left, we have the five volts, then the camera, and then the ground. The plus five volts and the ground are far from each other, which is good. Over here we can find the button that will enable you to change the channels. Now instead of supporting 40 channels, this board supports 48 channels and you can monitor the channel and frequency and also the output strength that you're currently using through this that indicator over here. The signal pads are located next to each ESC. So we have the classic beta flight layouts. S1 is here, S2, S3 and S4. And we also have an RSSI pad over here. On the bottom of the flat controller, we can find the VTX. You can see that now it's written here race band and also it uses the Betaflight OSD. In addition, we can find an S6 connector. This flight controller cannot support hexacopters because there is no signal 5, but you can remap this pad and use it with other peripherals. We also have this TX1 pad over here, the RX3 pad over here. Over here, we can find the connector for your receiver. The left one is RX1 then 3.3 volts if you want to use a DSMX receiver, then ground, plus 5 volts, then SBUS and PPM connectors. The connector is included, so all you have to do is just to remove the wires that you're not using and simply connect it to your receiver. On the right side, we can find another port which uses the same connector just like the one on top. The top pin is the LED connector, then the buzzer minus, plus 5 volts, ground, RX6, and then TX6. Again, you are given two of these types of connectors, so that's pretty much convenient. So for example, if you're using a buzzer, just remove the other wires and connect the wires directly to your buzzer. 
Just like the previous flight controllers, when the board is connected through USB, the VTX is not going to be powered on, so you have nothing to worry about. But in addition, in this version, pressing this button is not going to change the band and channel like the previous ones, so you won't be able to set it up when it's connected through USB. You're only going to see the digit zero on the LED indicator. The flight controller comes pre-flashed with Betaflight 3.2.3 and it's running Omnibus F4. As you can see the board doesn't come preset, so you will have to do the configuration by yourself. So the next thing I'm going to do is to assemble the board on my Tinsley RC Big Shock frame. The 4-in-1 ESC controller I'm using on the bottom was part of the Ishin Stack X which wasn't a very successful product so I just kept the 4-in-1 ESC, hopefully it's not going to suck. And in addition I also kept the camera, now it's encased in this 3D printed case which I originally printed for my Runcam Split 2. So in case you have the Ishin Stack X and you want to keep the camera this might be a good option because the HD capabilities of these cameras are not bad and you get in a 35 grams HD camera that you can mount on your quadcopter and you can have a spare HD camera and instead of just throwing away the Asian Stack X you can use the camera and hopefully also the 4-in-1 AC controller. Now it's worth mentioning that on the flight controller you don't have a port for 4-in-1 AC controller so you'll have to separate the wires and connect it directly to the signal pads. It could have been great if they also added a port for 4-in-1 AC controllers because lots of wheels using 4-in-1 AC controllers and having the ability to connect it directly to a flight controller without having the need to connect each wire directly to a signal pad could have been a great option. So the next thing I'm going to do is to quickly assemble everything up, then I'm going to go through a bit of flight configuration and then head outdoors to see how this flight controller performs. I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video. As always, if you have any questions about this flight controller, feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye. Thank you.